Hi, I'm Amalia Brightly Gillett, Managing Director and Second Generation of Family Business Place, and welcome to Family Business in Five, where I tackle some of the most common problems that we see in family businesses in under five minutes. And today, I've got a very special guest. Welcome, Ali from People Puzzles. And today, Ali's going to talk to us about could your business run without you? So, Ali, give me a bit of background. So, I started People Puzzles 10 years ago, and we exist to help business owners who find managing their people time consuming and stressful. And we do that by providing part time people directors. And we meet a lot of business owners who find it quite stressful to go on holiday or um, even at the weekend feel like they need to check their phone, their emails all the time and worry about what decisions their team might make if they're not around. Mm. And actually, that's quite an exhausting life to live. Yeah. Certainly, most business owners I know would love to be able to go on holiday for a fortnight and not worry about whether there's internet connection or not. Yeah. yeah. OK, and so there are some key things you can do as the owner of a family business to help overcome some of that stress and anxiety. So we've got five minutes. Do you think we can cover it in that? Let's try. Let's give it a go. Start the clock. Okay, what's the first thing you can do as a business owner? Well, I think firstly being really aware of the challenge of wanting a business to run without you because actually the only person who can do something about that is you. Mm. And although you might not say it in so many words, sometimes that desire to be needed and feeling like you're embroiled and involved in it all and at the helm can feel quite good because you're in control. But the challenge of that is that the business can't really function without you. So I always recommend a few things to businesses. And as I said, the first is to be really aware. The second one is to have a really great senior team around you. So it's quite lonely at the top if you are making all decisions on your own and your team are coming to you with every little problem and you are the answer to everything. Mm. Whereas actually, if you build a really good senior team, to carry on operating like that is a bit of a waste of time. You're paying lots of expensive salaries, you've trained people up, you've handed stuff over, and then yet you're saying, well, bring everything back to me. Mm. So if you're going to go down the journey of having a great senior team, that means you actually need to firstly share your knowledge with them and secondly, empower them. So you're actually saying, well, that's your decision. That's within your realm of responsibility. It's your department. You know what's important to us. You know our values. You know how we operate you're part of this business, you decide. So that for me is really crucial. If people are making their own decisions within the framework and the um, the, the freedom that you've given them to do that, it should mean that things can happen without you on a day-to-day, be- day-to-day basis. Brilliant. Okay. And what's what's the next way of building that? So I think it's then to create leadership at every level with the organisation, because otherwise what you're setting up is a senior team of sort of little dictators who are also then not allowing anyone in their Mm. teams below them. So that means everybody in the business is going on a journey of taking um, ownership of their own tasks. They're accountable for the things within their remit. And again, there's freedom to make decisions within the framework you've given them. So I know businesses that... Um, say things like, well, if you make a decision that is in line with our company values, it will never be wrong. Actually, I love that because you're enabling people within your team to get on and do things. And my personal preference would be, I'd much rather um, a few times here and there to say to somebody, you went too far. And actually that didn't quite work. Than you know, 99 times have to make the decision myself. Mm. And I know um, when you talk like that with business owners, most of them would agree with that. Brilliant. Okay. And so what's another way you can make sure the business could run without you? Well, I think it's having great systems. So I'll give you a personal example. Um, About five years into running People Puzzles, my mum, who had been diagnosed with cancer 10 years ago, um, was re-diagnosed. It was uh, a bit astonishing, really, the way it happened. But she um, she had treatment and it, you know, as these things often go, you know, 10 years becomes five years, becomes two years in, in a matter of months. And um, she ended up going into hospital and five weeks later, it, it was awful. And she, she died. It sort of felt like it happened very quickly at the end. So I was out of the business from the day she went into hospital until a couple of weeks mm-hmm. afterwards, as, mm-hmm. as you would expect. And in that time, we hired new team members, we won new clients, the business grew. 
And I realized, and I don't think I'd been that intentional about it, but I think my style has always been to be very inclusive and encourage others mm. to take decisions. But I use that story to help people think about what would your business be like if you were out of the business for nine weeks? If you didn't make a decision, you didn't tell anyone what to do, you didn't check in with anybody, and you just sort of let the business to have free reign. And the difference, when I speak to business owners and some of them say, I can't be out of the business for a week, let alone nine weeks or, you know, three months. And it tends to be the terrible things happening that force you to see things in a different way. But I think it's really important to think about um, your business being able to operate without you being there because the worst sometimes does happen, unfortunately. Absolutely, unfortunately. Okay, so let's recap on some of those things. So the first thing is to be aware you know, have you even thought about the fact that actually if the worst could happen, could the business run without you? The second thing is to empower people to make decisions and to let them know it's okay to make decisions. Yeah. You're not going to undermine them yeah. as long as it was made for the right reason. The third thing is to have good systems in place so that everyone knows how the business operates, whether you are there or uh oh, whether you <laughs> are there or not. So yeah. close. And so if you implemented three of those three things, what would the impact of that be? I think the impact is things like you can go on holiday and not check your email. Holiday? What's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you can actually not have to be there every day. Yeah. So one of the things about the way I work now, and I know you're similar, I only work three days a week. Mm. So in the two days a week I don't work, I can trust that really good things are still happening in the business. And actually, it's a much more enjoyable business to be part of. So the team say they love the freedom. They love the trust. They love the fact that they can make decisions and make things happening, happen. And they're not, you know, it's, it's less like being a sort of unit in a machine and more like being accountable and owning their own workspaces. Brilliant. Okay. So in sort of five minutes ish, <laughs> we covered how to make sure your business could run without you. Thank you so much, Ali, for that. Those words of wisdom. And before I leave you today, I want to leave you one final thought. The more successful your family business, the bigger your family's impact. Thank you.